So you know one of my favorite all-time sayings, pretty much my life motto, live and learn. Yeah, I live every day and I seem to learn every day. And uh, especially when you're working on this thing behind me, I learn a lot, mainly what not to do. <laughs> so of course, uh, in my endeavors to save money and be different, whether I'm right or wrong, I still end up making mistakes and I've made a pretty notable one this time. Not that it affects the performance of the car or anything with the car, but it does affect me. I'll tell you why. So in the trunk of Buster here, you know that if I pull this up, oh, whew, we have my little tank here that was water meth, and now it's containing some E85. Well, there's two problems that's going on here. First of all, problem number one, if you look at the tank, see how it's not right? <laughs> it's sinking in right here. At first, I thought it was this pushing on it, but it's not that because this is the part it pushes on but it's sinking right here in the middle. Problem number two, the entire inside of my car smells like gas. Yeah, that's a problem. I first thought there was a leak or something, so I went and checked all the lines up here. I checked all the lines under here. I looked everywhere trying to figure out where the smell was coming from. I couldn't figure it out because I didn't really notice anything with water methanol in the tank, but when I put E85, that's when I started smelling this in the car. I'm like, oh no, please tell me it's not leaking. And come to find out, there's no problem at all. Everything is working the way it's supposed to, which is actually the problem, believe it or not. What do I mean by that? Okay, so this tank here is for a lawnmower. I think it's like for a replacement gas tank for a Murray lawnmower. This cap that goes on the tank is whatever, you know, it's for lawn equipment. Little did I know, this little hole in the top, that's not like a leftover thing from like the plastic mold or something. No, there's holes in the inside here too. Little did I know, this is a vented cap. Yeah, I didn't even think about it, that lawn equipment with small tanks, use vented caps. Hear the air, if I push on the tank. And then if I plug that hole up, mm -hmm, yeah, can't do nothing. It didn't even cross my mind, not one bit. I know the gas tank in the car is vented. I understand why you vent a gas tank. It never occurred to me that on lawn equipment, I mean, even my lawnmower in here, it never occurred to me that these caps are vented in the way they're designed. And so needless to say, this just fills up my car with fumes, which is not good to be breathing in. And it's, you know, you don't want to fill a car up with combustible fumes, especially when it's hot Florida summer. Not the best thing you could possibly be doing with your vehicle. <laughs> So that means I need to address the venting of this tank. So fixing the cap is not a big deal. Literally just put something in that top hole or on the inside, some silicone or something to plug it up. Done. Turn my vented cap into a non-vented cap. The vent, the gas tank, the fuel cell, the whatever I've turned it into, that's a little bit more complicated. It's gonna be a little bit more involved, but it should still hopefully be mostly straightforward. And there's one key component that makes this all work. And that is this right here. So after some research, this is what I figured out is what's used in most fuel cells for their vents. This is what's called a rollover valve because it goes in like this, and if the car rolls over on its lid, well, it's, there's a little ball in there, right? If it rolls over, that ball closes up the hole so no fuel can leak through the vent. So that's why it's called a rollover valve. But what this also does is allows the tank to vent, and I'm sure that that ball will have some type of buoyancy 
one, eh, maybe it's heavy enough to stay down, but it basically allows it to vent up through here. And if there is any buoyancy, it, uh, you know, kind of turns into a check valve. But this is designed exactly for this use. And I have, I've already had this uh, 90 degree elbow laying around from when I did the catch can system. So I'm like, this will come in handy for this. So this is a Dash 10 um, outlet, which should be way more enough for this little tank. So this will allow it to vent properly and hopefully not create any suction. But it's pretty, this is super easy to put in. So basically you got two sides of this and you got these two little nylon washers, seals that go in between. This part goes in the tank, you put that on, then you thread this through the top and this little nylon washers help seal everything together. And you thread it through the top like that, you put it on, good to go. And then I'm gonna have this on here like that it's going to go out this way and go straight down. Ideally, since it's going to come out right here under the car, well, conveniently enough, right here is the charcoal canister for the gas tank of the vehicle. So I have my lines right here going to it. I don't know which is which. I'm going to have to figure that out, but I'll double check that. And it would be nice if I could tie into the existing system here and it can utilize the factory charcoal canister and EVAP system on the car to vent the tank. This whole system supplies a vacuum that pulls the fumes out and into the engine when needed. So that would be kind of cool. And I should have everything I need depending on what line I, I need to use. I don't know. I just need to get some type of fitting that will plug in between a T fitting of some sort and uh, that should be good to go. So yeah, this is what I need to do. I mean, how much fuel is in the... Okay, so looks like I gotta drain this tank. All right, so this, this is straightforward. I always figure out which end of this dang thing siphons. All right, now I get some nice pump in action. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, gee. Okay, now I'm making a mess trying to be funny. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this nice and slow. Yep. I'm just kind of looking around here where it would be a good place to mount this vent. Unfortunately, it looks like by adding said vent, this is gonna sit higher than this, which means I'm not gonna be able to use my uh, trunk mat. So that kind of sucks, because that was the whole purpose of using a low-profile tank like this. Um, and I can't really vent it this way, so that's also stupid. I mean, depends who you ask, this whole damn thing is stupid. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Sadly, I thought I could use the grommet that I put under there, that I made for all the wires and stuff. But it looks like I'm going to have to drill a whole separate hole just for this, wherever this goes. That's fine, I guess. I mean, it could go that way from the corner here and go down. See, I also want it to be close to these lines here, so it probably would be best to vent it out that left side, that left corner. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do then. I'm gonna put it in that corner. Gotta see how big of a hole I need to take out of this. That's pretty big. That's what she said. Uh, you knew that was coming. That's what he said. Nah. Oh, shut up. Yes, I know, my work area is awful. I've been working on a failed project, so, you know, I haven't cleaned up from it. Okay, so we gotta max this baby out, and then some. I don't have a, a drill bit bigger than the step bit, so. Whatever gets the job done, you know what I'm saying? I may not have the biggest drill bit, but it's not the size of the drill bit that count, it's how you use it. So I'm trying to see here, somewhere, somewhere like right here, right here looks good, right here, yeah. All right, let's check, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's not, e that's not even close. Ah, crud. Well, upon looking in the tank, it looks like I got crap in there, so 
thought this would be easy, but it looks like I gotta bring the tank out, which is a little bit more work than I thought. Hmm. So I may or may not have made an additional mistake trying to correct my first mistake. So I didn't even think about it. Didn't even cross my mind. It's a theme you've noticed lately uh, that when trying to install that valve that needs to be underneath the tank, you, you need to have room to access said valve to screw it on. Well, you can't access it through a little hole like this, and then the only big hole is over here. Yeah, that don't work. So I have no way of holding the bottom side of the valve to screw the top part into it and yeah, that's a problem. Which also didn't occur to me, fuel cells that use these type of valves also have, you know, access panels that are sealed. You know, they have a rubber seal and they have a bunch of bolts or whatever that you have to put in. I could just similarly really hack it all up and just get some piece of plastic and just cut some type of whole circular triangle hexagon polygon my money gone and install the valve in that and then just silicone it to this ah i definitely keep myself busy now i gotta think about this one now everything's gotta be a huge pain in the ass a few minutes later i checked around the garage here to see if i had any material and this is what i come up with oh yes i had this Thin aluminum sitting around, but I prefer plastic. Yeah, but no, I mean, this will work. It's all grade A redneck engineering anyway. It's not like it's some super high quality premium work. So yeah, I end up making this little plate. So it looks all nice. And basically I just made the hole big enough in the tank. Just slides in and yeah, it'll be something. Yeah, yep, 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 something like that. So, and then that's gonna sit down there like that, and then silicone is gonna seal it all up like that. This should work. This should be all I need. So I'm gonna go and get the silicone up. While the silicone is drying, I need to work on figuring out how I'm going to even <laughs> tap into the uh, EVAP system, so. After doing a little bit of homework, I realized that this line here, I've removed the piece, this line here is what goes from the tank into the canister. I think this is also an inlet, and this is the one that goes up to the front of the car. Pretty sure, could be wrong. You need to tap into this. This is a quick disconnect fittings, and I got any around. So naturally what I do is I start cutting things that are probably very expensive to replace so I can make my own stuff. And after a little bit of cutting and measuring and cussing and praying this is what i got right here all right so simple as it is um this end goes on there like that that connects there like so and then it'd be cool it'd be awesome i don't know if this will work out this way but i can angle this t-fitting up and if i can cut a hole in the trunk and run the hose straight down into the fitting, that would be great. I mean, it's not quite where I wanted to put it, but that would be cool. If not, I have to run the hose from down here and then around and gets close to the muffler. And so, you know, working as you go, you start realizing, ah, eh, crap. Things you thought would work probably won't. Looks like this is where that brace is. I think right here is where I'm looking at it, you know, the tank sits here, the vents here, so really just go and then straight down. So it didn't turn out too bad down here. So everything fits good. I have a clamp here and then just in case I have a clamp going up, this actually worked out just fine on the braided hose that's going to the tank for the vent. Coming back up here, you can see that I have the hose ran, the tank's back in, the vent's on. So now all I do is just pretty much just kind of 
eyeball that right there, right there, you know, something like that. Make my cut. Yeah, let's finish this up because we're losing daylight. I'm hungry. Here she is. We're all said and done. So let's do final assembly here. And last little bit. All right. There we go. I was hoping it would be, you know, the hose would lay a little bit more that way, but hey, you know what? That's perfectly fine. <sighs> now this tank should vent the way it needs to, and I should have no problems. In fact, let's see if it's aired out in here any. Ah. <sighs> oh. Ah, oh, I can do math. That's so much better. That was a lot more work than I thought, but it's done the way it should have been the first time. Well, you get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I think that's gonna finally wrap it up here for this video. Until the next video, if you liked this one, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for next Cars Created video. And I'm gonna go get a shower, because I feel like ass.